my name is Dr. Jonathan Leverett. I'm a clinical endocrinologist in Dallas, Texas, and the current president of the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists. I'm here today with Dr. Vivian Fonseca, professor of medicine at Tulane Medical School. We're going to talk about innovations in prandial insulins. As you know, there are several prandial insulins. The beginning insulins were regular human insulin, which has the U100 regular human insulin and U500 regular human insulin. The regular human insulin, the U100, has been replaced mostly by the analog insulins, and those include Lyspro, Aspart, and Glulysine. Lyspro, as you know, has both a, has both a U100 and a U200 uh, a variety available. And there are some new Lyspros, follow-on Lyspro and ultra-rapid Lyspro, currently unavailable but are in development. As far as the Asparts are concerned, there's also a faster-acting Aspart, which is also in development. And then, as finally, there's the ultra-rapid-acting uh, technosphere inhaled insulins. Vivian, would you talk a little bit about those insulins for us? So, you know, inhaled insulin is not a new concept. It, they, they came up, one came on the market, it was a large device, it was, didn't, wasn't very successful. And now we have another, much smaller device uh, developed by technosphere. It's a somewhat different formulation, much easier to use than the previous one. It has a, it's, a, it's very uh, interesting. In the subcutaneous tissue, insulin is a little slow to be absorbed. It, blood has to go and interact with that insulin and get absorbed. Whereas in the lung, it goes straight through. It's very, very fast, very short acting. Has the advantage in that it can bring the blood glucose down very rapidly if you give enough. And it's gone in a, in a short period of time, which means you don't get hypoglycemia. So, Theoretically, uh, a very uh, appealing one, both particularly for type 1 diabetes, but also uh, for type 2. And it's been tried in people who, as the first insulin. Uh, you know, without basal insulin, you're taking oral agents, you add it on, it eliminates the, the postprandial peaks. It's very effective, but there are some limitations to use. Uh, it, I, I think quite useful in type 1. Uh, in type 2, you've got to use higher doses. There are, you know, you can't use it for ketoacidosis. You can't use it in people who are smoking because they, they weren't included in the clinical trials. It's contraindicated in chronic lung disease. So you've got to do lung function tests before starting treatment and during treatment, which is a bit of a limitation. Uh, you've got to monitor uh, a, a number of things related to insulin and uh, what do you do when you have a cough and throat and all that pain. And, you know, those kind of things have to be worked out. But in general, inhaled insulin is available for those who want it. The other fairly recent development is uh, U200 uh, insulin. You know, we, we, we'll get to U500 later on, but U200 is fairly new. Could you comment on that? Sure. Uh, U200 insulin is uh, used in type 1 and in type 2 diabetes, and the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics are, uh, are similar to U100. Uh, but different, of course, from regular human insulin. You get an earlier peak, and the uh, and the time to uh, on the time to the uh, off of the insulin of is less for the U uh, two hundred insulin. And so it does have the advantage of using smaller injection volumes for patients who require a lot of of insulin. So it has its uh, its value in those patients who need a great deal of insulin preprandly in order to make sure that their blood sugars are well controlled. The other, uh, so basically it's half the volume. You do have to occasionally be concerned about hypokalemia. There is also the potential concerns of always with TZDs, the issues of fluid retention and heart failure. And there's some adverse uh, effects, of course, always hypoglycemia, some injection site reactions. Um, and lipodystrophy. But not particularly more than, than, than other insulins. Correct. Yeah. Uh, U500 insulin, on the other hand, is, a, is quite different. Uh, you know, they, as you make insulin more and more uh, concentrated, the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics change very substantially. Uh, it's much longer acting. In fact, 
uh, regular human insulin uh, or the analogs don't really last overnight. You've got to add in a basal insulin. There's some people with type 2 diabetes who use U500 who don't need a basal because that U500 in the evening lasts overnight because of the change in the dynamics. Of course, there's some of them are taking uh, oral agents as well. And why do we need U500 insulin? It's because some people need a lot of insulin. And it's quite remarkable how much U500 insulin we have been using in this country over the last few years. The, the sales have just gone up very dramatically. And uh, that's related to insulin resistance in the population, obesity. On a per kilogram body weight basis, obese people need more insulin. And there are physical limitations to how much U100 you can fit in a syringe or in a pen. And so you have to have these more concentrated insulins. And U500 insulin works very well in some people. Not for everybody, but in some people, you get much better control, improvements in A1C. Uh, uh, surprisingly, actually, less hypoglycemia because you're now able to take it in a more rational kind of form or meal-related, and uh, without any concern about, of, of, you know, there's some weight gain, but it's not huge, and uh, I mean, in the background of obesity, and you you can get people controlled who you couldn't get controlled before. There was one downside before in that. People got confused with the dosing, you know, it's five times the amount. But now you have a pen, and you can dial the correct, accurate dose of U500 dose in the terms of the units, which you couldn't do before. Your patients had to do this calculation, and people got confused. So there are some limitations. Uh, uh, it's mainly used in people who need more than 200 units a day. Uh, you have to have this U500 syringe or you, some other kind of way for, to remind people that they're taking very concentrated insulins. But now with a pen, that's not, a, not an issue. And you have the usual problems of insulin, like hypoglycemia, weight gain, and uh, if you're using a TZD, fluid retention, et cetera. But I, I, I think it's a big advantage to have this available for people who need it. So we, you know, we are very fortunate to have such a wide range of insulins allowing us to tailor therapy according to what our patients' needs are. Vivian, I've been very happy with, use, with the use of U500 insulin. In patients who need it, it's been really very Same effective. Here. And I've seen many patients who've had very significantly elevated hemoglobin A1Cs being brought down into a, a reasonably good range, even into goal range, uh, when they're taking two, three hundred units of U100 insulin, and we switch them to U500 insulin. It's been a, it's been a, a you know, a lifesaver for a number of Actually, patients. Actually, it's been available a long, long time, but now with a pen, uh, it's, it, you're eliminating the problem of dosage error, which was a huge problem.